In this video, we'll show you how to customize your online store to make it your own. In our previous video, I've showed you how to set up your store, so be sure to check that one out. Once you've signed up with the website.com account and logged into the site builder, you'll see this template that you can easily customize. The first thing we'll do is change the logo and store name. This template came with a logo made out of a button and text element. If you have your own logo saved as an image file, all you need to do is right click on these elements and click delete to remove them. And then add an image by clicking add on the left, clicking image and upload your own image. Once you've uploaded it, just click and drag to resize your logo. You can also create your own logo by using an icon element and text, and feel free to check out those tips on creating that in another video we've made. For now, I'll just simply change the name of my store by clicking on the button and clicking edit text. Next, we'll change this large hero banner image, which can quickly change the entire feel of the site. Just click on the image, and we'll click to manage content, or you can click again, and click change image. And then we'll click replace image. You can choose a stock image or upload your own, making sure to use a high resolution photo to avoid it from being pixelated or low quality. I'll just search the stock images, and the great thing is they are copyright free and completely free to use. Just click use image. You can also customize the text that appears on the hero banner, as well as the call to action, which will be on the button, and which collection you wanna to link to this element. As I mentioned in a previous video, a collection is a way to categorize your products so that you can connect them to a gallery or other element. We'll just change our button so that the call to action says shop sale. Next, we'll click under link to, and we can choose to link the hero banner to a different page, document, etc. but we'll link it to a collection in my store. To change which collection I wanna connect this element to, I'll just click on the button that says change store collection. Now select the collection you want to connect it to. Then I'll hit save. Save one more time. And when I'm happy with this, I'm going to click save. If you scroll on the home page, you'll notice there's a product gallery connected to another collection here. So to change the collection, just click on the product gallery element. Click connect collection. And I'll choose to feature the sale collection on this gallery as well. You can easily change the order of the products by clicking on it again and clicking sort products. So you can change the display order based on the name, the price, etc. Or you can custom order it yourself just by clicking and dragging on these dots here. Now let's scroll down to the footer section at the bottom. Just a quick note, your site pages are made up of the header section at the top, the body section, which is the largest section of the page, and the footer section at the bottom. The header and footer sections are global, meaning if you make changes to the size of them, that will affect the header or footer on all of your site pages, while your body section is unique to each page. So we'll just do a quick customization by changing the text element on the footer. And we'll click on this address and click edit text. You'll notice that this selected element is outlined in orange. And when you hover on these elements, they're also outlined in orange. This means that they've been set to global and will appear on all of your site pages. If you add any new elements to your footer section, you'll probably wanna make them global. Just to show you where you can make an element unique or global, I'll right click on this element and you'll see this toggle that says show on all pages. So I'll just turn that off for now. And you'll see now it's outlined in blue, meaning it's unique just to this page. So we'll just make it show on all pages again by right clicking on it and clicking show on all pages. And when you turn on the show on all pages toggle, be sure to navigate to the rest of your pages to ensure that you're happy with the position of that global element on other pages. Now let's take a look at the pages on my site. You can click on this page's overview dropdown on the top left. 
and you'll see all of your pages on your site. I see that there's a blog here. And while a blog is a great way to keep my site relevant and increase visitors, for now I just don't have the time to keep it updated, so I'll just remove it. To remove it, just hover on the page and click on this garbage icon that will delete the page. If you just want to hide the page for now instead of permanently deleting it, you can click on the settings icon right here and deselect enable page and then click save. On site menu on the left right here, be sure to click it and then remove the blog from your site menu. So we'll go back to pages and we'll go to the contact page here. You can click on the Google Maps element and then click edit address to input your location. Again, you'll probably want to customize the text on your text element right here. And for the web form, you can customize the fields just by clicking on it and clicking edit form. You can add a new field by selecting the type of field you want to add on the left. And to customize a field, just click on it. And then over here, for example, to change the label, just click on the label, backspace, and type your new field. Then click Save. By default, when visitors submit a completed form, you'll be sent a notification to the email you use to sign up for your website.com account. But you can change your notification settings by clicking on the element and choosing Form Settings. Now let's navigate to another page. So we'll just choose the Shop All page. So this template already came with a store page, which includes a product gallery that's connected to all of your products. If you want to add a product gallery or other store elements to this page or to your other pages, you can easily find them by clicking on store and clicking elements. You'll see you can add a single product or choose a type of product gallery in different styles, which you can link to your collections, or you can add a shopping cart icon or a product search bar, which you'll see has already been included on this template. Now let's go back to the home page. And let's click on the mobile icon app on the top to optimize a mobile version of your site. Having a mobile version is really important so that you don't miss out on any potential customers who are browsing on a smartphone. In the mobile editor, any elements that are outside of the mobile view, for example here or here, won't be seen on the mobile version of your site. You'll see that this template has mostly been optimized for mobile already, so we don't really need to do anything except for maybe move around some logo elements that we've added. But if you've added new elements, be sure to resize them for mobile and drag them where you want them to appear on mobile devices or use the smart layout, which is right here to quickly resize and place your elements within the mobile view. When you're done, click on the Pages Overview and make sure that the mobile toggles are turned on. This will mean that visitors who view your site through a phone or tablet will see the mobile version. So make sure you go through all your pages and optimize all of them for mobile. Now we'll go back to the desktop version and let's click Preview on the top right. This will show you what your site will look like when it's live. When you're happy with your site, just click Publish. And make sure all the pages you want to go live are selected. And then just click Publish. And your online store will be online and open to the public. That's it for this video. We hope it was helpful. Be sure to check out other resources on the website.com YouTube channel and happy site building.